they didn't eat anything but that was after they both put me in a headlock yeah <laughs> they chased me down and i that i was, was i was gonna start i was gonna start running because those two were so far ahead of me and i, I kept yelling they at them grabbed like grabbed you and put you in a headlock yeah. I kept, I kept yelling at them like, you guys, wait for me. And this just kept, kept running off. And I was just like, wait for me. What the F? Welcome to the Real and Relatable Podcast, where no topic is off limits. We're the girlfriends that keep it real and give you different perspectives. Because we know one way isn't always the right way. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Real and Relatable Podcast. I'm Ma. I'm LC. And my name is Cash. And today's episode is a fun episode. We're going to do a little bit of a mukbang. And we're also going to be talking about all of our travels that we have done. If you follow any of our socials, the three of us actually do travel quite a bit throughout the year. Um, so we'll talk about that. But before we get into that, um, let's just talk a little bit about the dishes that we brought. I'll go first. Um, so I made this is steak nam tak. So it's just steak with a bunch of seasoning and tons of vegetables. I do have a TikTok video on it. Uh, if you're interested, I guess we'll link it in the section below and you guys can click on it if you guys want to learn how to make that. Mm -hmm. And so, Elsie? I made shrimp pasta. So one of my favorite dishes is a seafood pasta. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just hers. <laughs> and, then, and then for me, I made ceviche. Just kidding. <laughs> I bought it. Okay. <laughs> I bought mine because um, I've actually never practiced making ceviche before. So I'll practice it soon. But this is from Rikas, um, R-I-K-A-S in Los Angeles. So we're going to dig in. It's going to be the eating, talking yeah. episode. By the way, and it's for Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot we're doing it for Thanksgiving. In the, in the spirit of. <laughs> yes. So. Spirit of. All right. Uh, so let's dig in. All right. Uh, so we're talking about travel. Um, so where are some of your favorite places that you guys have been? I've loved every place that I've traveled to, but I think my top places, and there are different reasons for why I love them, but Italy I love because I studied abroad there for a semester. Oh, that's um, why you bought the Yeah, that's you the so that's why I brought the pasta. And when I studied there, I lived abroad there. So we had a private residence and we all lived there so it was three schools uw madison my alma mater um u of michigan and duke university so we had students from all three universities and we lived um outside of florence uh, and our instructors also came to our villa to teach us there so we weren't at a university we had our own professors come to teach us and our chef there in-house chef was amazing this little italian man and he would um give us cooking lessons and he would teach us what he's making so this is like i learned from him the way he made um, pasta and he was also our opera teacher and he was just this amazing like creative person my second favorite place is actually to tulum and there it's funny because a lot of Italians have moved out there and have opened up shops and restaurants and things like that. So one of my favorite places there or favorite thing to do is to get off the plane, go straight to Tulum town and go and have a, a pasta, a seafood pasta dish. So that's kind of my inspo for this dish and two of my favorite places to travel to. What about you, Cash? What's your... Well, I actually wanted to say this pasta tastes really amazing. LC, great job making it. It tastes a little healthy to me because sometimes when up the pasta is healthier, it has a different texture. Is this uh, what type of pasta did you use? Yeah, this is my first time using a non-wheat pasta, so it's made with chickpeas. Oh, um, wow. yeah, that's why it's you know so now it's healthy. It's got tons of you know protein. So yeah, mm -hmm. it, the texture is a little bit different than what I'm used to, but it's not bad. It's good. Um, and then the sauce is light because it's the seafood. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I was just going to say it's good. The noodles is just a little hard. <laughs> so. A little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. that, so. I feel that, like that's on purpose. Different. Yeah, I feel like it's that's on purpose. purpose. Yeah. Um, but also it doesn't like, it's not chewy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I chewy. feel like it's not but supposed I like to it. be. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. it. It's soft mm -hmm. enough. Similarly, I like every place that I've been to. I love traveling overall. But one place that really was special to me and uh, stood out to me is Peru. And for me, you know, it's really interesting because Peru has, I, I tend to like springtime and summertime and a lot of green and forest, water, all of that. However, Peru 
is not that, but I, I loved it. And I think it's because mm. the sacredness of Machu Picchu, yeah. um, the really crazy, not easy hike through Rainbow Mountain. As I was researching for Rainbow Mountain, everybody was saying something different. They said it wasn't that hard. But when I went, it is hard. Mm. If you're going to go up Rainbow Mountain to that scenic, Google it right now. Or maybe we'll have it below, but um, <laughs> but it's so beautiful. And that famous spot where they take a picture and you see the Rainbow Mountain at the top, it's actually quite very high. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's maybe 14 or 15,000 feet. Um, it's really high. It's really yeah. high. <laughs> and I almost made it. <laughs> I was so, I don't know if I was out of shape or what, but I almost made it um, to the top without using a donkey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so they have donkeys. They case. have donkeys. Okay. And every single time they come, I was tempted. And I, I took so long mm -hmm. that our tour group was way ahead of us because <laughs> I went there with my ex. Mm -hmm. And he was actually really, really good. But I just was struggling so hard. I was 80% of the way. And then I took the donkey. Mm -hmm. And once I was on the donkey, I was so I, I started to be able to sit back and re relax mm -hmm. and enjoy yeah, the enjoy. view more. But is it's just beautiful. Peru looks like Mars because wow. it's dry. The okay. rock, the sand, it's it's red orange ish. The people, you'll you'll drive by the countryside and the people are farming and the ladies they have attire that's very colorful mm -hmm. and they're just so cute. Mm. So yeah, so this is ceviche. Peru is um, on my list. You're gonna you would love it. But I, I heard is it dangerous? No, no, no. Oh. It's not dangerous. <laughs> it's not Colombia is dangerous. And mm -hmm. I went to Colombia too. This is a mixed seafood ceviche. And you'll see as you guys uh mm -hmm. grab the plate ladies, there's a ton of different corn variety. Yeah. And that's one thing Peru is known for yes. is they have a lot of corn variety and a, a lot of fields of organic quinoa. Mm -hmm. So I went we went mountain biking by the scenic area where it was right by the Andes Mountains. And you'll see fields and fields of quinoa. And wow. sometimes they're purple. And it's just beautiful. The site is beautiful. Wow. Um, so I think if you both went, you would love it. Okay. I do yeah, like the hike too. So. so my favorite place actually is Venice. I will say I was really sad. I only got to spend like really one day there. Okay. So mm. we, were, we were in our 20s. And we had a friend that was already living in London and we, we were asking about like recommendations, like where can we go and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we we're thinking about Venice and he goes, he, and he was like, oh, you can do Venice in one day. Like, n like there's nothing there. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, OK, so True. we so we planned our trip that way. Mm -hmm. But then when I went there, I was like, oh, it's just so beautiful and like mm -hmm. serene. And I love being on the water, even though I don't know how to swim. Uh, <laughs> So we only really did spend one day in Venice. So I was really sad about that um, because I just love how like the lights light up at night. I just love traveling on the water to the different places. And uh, but yeah, I if I was to go back, I definitely would want to go back to Venice at least once, you know, before it goes under. <laughs> right. So my dish is actually homemade because I actually have not traveled to somewhere where I'm like the food is absolutely amazing and i think the only thing i liked about food overseas was the desserts mm. i will say they definitely know how to make their desserts it's not overly sweet and it's just the right amount of sweetness and mm -hmm. they the portion mm -hmm. size is also the right amount for you too mm -hmm. uh, so i will say if anything that's like my favorite that's true. food overseas is the sweets but that's true like our sweets here in the states are like grossly sweet in my opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my god this ceviche is really good and it oh, definitely good. tastes like peruvian ceviche okay. mm -hmm. awesome. not that i've been there but i've had peruvian food and ceviche before it's really good mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so what's one place you guys wouldn't go to again i mean maybe it was just the time of month that we went but i don't think i would go back to dubai <laughs> mm. yes that's a good one um, I think I agree I with that. It's kind of lonely. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, I felt like there wasn't much to do. I know yeah. we went on a, I know we were in November, which is like extremely hot. But like even in, and maybe everyone was just inside in the AC or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like, it, like the area we were at was supposed to be touristy. Mm -hmm. So I just assumed there would be a lot of people out and stuff. But there was like no one. So it just felt really 
dead and sad. I I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. To me, it was just like Vegas, but worse. in the Middle East. It's worse than Vegas. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by worse? Less people. It's empty. Oh, mm-hmm. Vegas, it's empty. It's people. And uh, maybe we were in the right place, but there wasn't like that strip like Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. So then it's like different. You you still have to That's drive funny. everywhere mm-hmm. to go to different places. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. their mall is like fantastic, it's beautiful, um, yeah. and I would definitely go to their mall again. The mall's but, the best part, maybe. Oh yeah, <laughs> the mall, the waterfront, the, the waterfront's where did we go? Oh yeah, the jewelry store. It was right was, by the mall. It was fun. Mm-hmm. We went gold shopping, and mm-hmm. um, after you buy your gold, they'll take you home. They they have a hired driver to take you home for security purposes, which is really smart. Mm-hmm. But the three of us took that trip together, mm-hmm. and that was one leg. The other leg was uh, Jordan, and the other leg was I loved uh, Jordan. Tel Aviv. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I did I enjoy them for Tel Aviv, but Jordan was better than Dubai. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just so different, you know. Jordan is like you're in the desert. You're like truly in the desert. I mean, yeah. we were truly in the desert. And it's just a, it's just so different. Mm-hmm. I can't even describe it. Mm-hmm. But it is one, one place that I do love, Jordan. So we went to the Wadi Rum. Mm-hmm. In Jordan, and we went to the Sea Petra, mm-hmm. was where we went in Jordan. I also love Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. I wanted to make a stop there because um, my family were Christians, and she um, went with me. Ma went with me. Yeah, um, I just didn't was, want her to go by herself because <laughs> um, I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, <laughs> this was before everything was that was happening. Yeah, this yeah. is. Uh, luckily, we went like the year before. I was too scared to go, yeah. so I skipped. I, I met them after they went. Well, I, I asked my ex, who's Jewish, and he's a lot like, of no, he's like, um, no, Israel is totally safe. Like, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. stay, yeah. you know, in the safe areas. Yeah. Well, one of the attorneys that work at my firm lives in Israel. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if anything happened, <laughs> we would have been okay. Mm, so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm still indulging in the pasta. Mm. I'm going to move plate by plate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go cold now, but... Oh yeah, we're so we can thank so my my chef opera teacher. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. No, a place I would never go to again would be Colombia. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But that's um, dangerous by yourself. Well, it, it would be dangerous by yourself. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why I went is because my ex was Colombian, so he, he uh, his mom and dad were there too. They have a house there, and I went with him mm-hmm. because they have a house there, and he goes there all the time. I felt very comfortable because, Mm -hmm. you know, I was with a Colombian, so I'm very comfortable. And to me, when I got there, I was just like, oh, it's just a normal country. Everything is fine. It's safe. It's fine. But there's certain aspects. Obviously, you have to be street smart and don't walk around with, you know, $30,000 bracelet on your wrist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Like homeless? (laughs) (laughs) Like homeless a little bit. It's hard for me not to stand out. There are Asians in South America. But oftentimes, you know, the way you dress, I hear often, and I, I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but the way you you dress gives you away because mm-hmm. we don't dress like the locals. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, I had a great time. Uh, it was beautiful. We got scammed behind the Hilton. You did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Because, wow. So there's a group of people there that lives on, I don't know if it's an island, but it's across the river from the Hilton. Mm-hmm. There's there's the old town in Cartagena, and there's new town that looks like Miami. Cartagena oh. is beautiful. The old town is beautiful. It's within a gate, and you walk in. All the buildings are colored. The buildings are so historically like influenced. I think I don't know from Euro- European or mm. or or yeah. what, but it's beautiful, beautiful. When you go to the new town, that's where our hotel was at the Hilton. There's an island. If you cross the waters, there's an island or a space where people lived, and those people approached us and said, "Hey, I have this thing, you know." Um, we have we're giving boat tours. Come with us. Me and my ex went. We were on a boat, a dinky little boat. We went to this resort made of dinky chairs and and little um, umbrellas. And and then we we ordered drinks. And the drinks tasted good. Mm-hmm. But the food, when the food came, I think there's a community of people. Mm. They live in the houses and they they do that business. Um, Basically are scam. Ill, whole, it's illegitimate whole, like, business, oh, wow. yeah. And I think the food that we ordered was cooked at the homes because the homes, you could see the homes. You're at the beach and you could see all the homes of the locals. My. We just see people carrying food out from the, from the homes. So wow. I got food poisoning and I got so sick. Like it was horrible. I was oh, just, wow. I was so sick. But I made the mistake of, because the whole time I wanted oysters, 
Mm. Um, oh, no. And that was my mistake because I didn't understand. You, you shouldn't have oysters with warm water because mm. there's mm. diseases and you will get sick. Uh, you could die. Bacteria. So I, I said, you know, we, we kept going around and I asked my ex, like, I want some oysters. All the restaurants said, there's no oysters here. There's no oysters here. Um, but I just was adamant. Never heard of oysters in Col yeah. Colombia. Yeah. And then when we went to that uh, beach resort. Uh, oh, there is none. <laughs> yeah. No, no. The makeshift resort. Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, yes. So they brought me some oysters. But now I realize it's probably some warm water oysters on the side of some rocks or something. You know what I mean? Oh. Um, I ate it and I think that's what made me sick. Oh my gosh. But wow. it was horrible. So what my friend Nina told me, because I told this story to her, she said, well, you know, moving forward, if the region doesn't have a food, maybe don't seek yes. that food. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> if you seek that food yeah. and the region does, is not known to have that food, it's going to be risky. Oops. So yeah. that's a lesson I learned. But I know this is kind of long with Colombia, but I do want to say Colombia is dangerous. When we were passing with this family, um, there's guards who have like large, long guns and they give the okay to go, meaning there's no groups that are stopping people and, and kidnapping people. So they make sure that certain highways and routes are safe. Uh, wow, that's dangerous. It's scary. And when they stopped us and they let us go, I, I asked my ex, what was that all about? He said, I don't want to tell you because I don't want to scare you. Mm -hmm. And then later he told me and I got scared. Mm -hmm. But I actually have a friend who, who, who did go to Colombia and he actually got kidnapped and we lost him. And it's really sad. And, you know, like not to make it a downer, but these are things that we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. These are things that are real. You don't want to... Because he was, he was like, hey, I love Colombia. People are so scared to travel. They shouldn't be scared to travel. They shouldn't play into the media and let fear hold them back, which is true. That's true. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it is known to be risky on, yeah. for a reason. For a reason. Exactly, exactly. You can't not... Um acknowledge the truth you know yeah. yes there are beautiful things and there are you know negative things about places and people but it, to kind of ignore the bad things is not safe mm -hmm. you know and traveling is not to be taken lightly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. when you're in a different country you don't speak the language yeah. you're not a part of the culture the people um it, it can be a very vulnerable situation yeah. so it's very important to travel to safe places i personally do not like traveling to places that are not like established like in terms of government in terms of safety makes sense uh, because of that like i'm, I'm yeah. just afraid i'm sure afraid for my own safety and um especially if you're a solo traveler or mm -hmm. a wo woman so solo mm -hmm. traveler and nothing against solo traveling because i have friends that solo travel would i do it never personally i would never solo travel my version of solo traveling is i go by myself and I hop around countries, but I meet up with my friends. Mm. Yeah, you no, know? I, I only do that if I've been to a place. Actually, I've only done that a couple of times to places that I feel comfortable with. So I've solo traveled to St. John's, oh, okay. which I love. St. John and St. Thomas. Um, Caribbean. But right? they're like a part of the Virgin Islands. They yeah. belong to the U.S., I think. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I went to St. John's, because it was rated, I don't even remember when I went now, many years ago. It was rated to have the number one most beautiful beach in the world. And I tracked that just because I love the beach and I love it. I tracked like, you know, I mean, I don't know what the rating is this year. I didn't check this year. But at that time, it was like number one for the most beautiful beach in the world. Mm. And oh, my God. Um, so true. You go there and you're wow. It's amazing. Beautiful. Water was pristine, clear, blue. Uh, it's just amazing. So that's something I kind of want to do, just kind of keep up with what's considered the most beautiful beach in the world and kind of go to each of those places. But I've been busy. I've traveled on my own back to Tulum. I love Tulum, but I was afraid, actually. A girlfriend of mine um, suggested that we go to Mexico one year uh, to the Tulum area. And I was scared. I was like, um, no, Mexico is dangerous, you know, but... Um, she was like, I've been there before. It's not dangerous. And we went and sure enough, like it was totally fine. So I feel safe now to go back because I'm familiar with the place. Yeah. But most of the time, like I wouldn't go to a country where I feel it's not safe. Yeah. You, and you're absolutely right to talk about the recipe. Because remember the missing woman who went to a yoga retreat? 
Oh no, I don't know about you, this. You don't know about mm. that? How could you? You're a yogi. I am now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now something definitely happened to her on that. Well, I don't. Yes. So, I don't, wait, wait. Tell me because I don't know. Maybe she went on a yoga it. retreat. Yeah, we went out on the water with a group with her yoga group. Oh, everybody came back but her. Her entire yoga group claims that they don't know what happened, and really, it's still an ongoing yeah. investigation. They. I, I believe the last time I heard, they haven't found her body yet. It happened during a kayaking. Mm -hmm. They went on the water. They Activity. were kayaking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, how can you guys go out as a group? And all, everyone came back but her. And yep. nobody thought to look out, like, where they should go, like, and keep no her with talk, the group. No one's talking. Right? When did this happen? This recent? This yeah. past year? Last year, yeah. yeah. But no one's talking, right, Ma? Like, none of those nope, people yeah, are talking. None of those yogi people will, will say anything. Like, how I many would, people were in that group? Do you know? Uh, I, I would know. say less it's than 10, more, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's very 10 ish, small. maybe. Mm -hmm. But yeah. someone knows something. Yep. They're, they're, just, not, they're mm -hmm. just not saying it's it. It's going to come out. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's. I will never solo travel because I'm a scaredy cat and I'm super paranoid. And I'm like that even when I solo travel in the United States. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's because I'm afraid. I watch too many SVU episodes. I'm afraid I'm going to get like trafficked and mm -hmm. kidnapped and unalived. <laughs> you guys, her nam tag is so good. <laughs> I just finished the pasta and I just started eating this. It's so good. But, but besides Dubai, where else would you guys have? Wait, where else would you have not gone? Go anymore? I don't have any other place that I wouldn't go again. I mean, I wouldn't mind going back to Dubai if, you know... One of you guys said, you know what? I want to go back there and let's have go my try it. Let's, let's go, go shopping. <laughs> I'll just let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. Yeah, yeah. Let's go whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, no, yeah. you know, but if it was me planning something, I wouldn't choose it. Right. You know, right. not top of your list. You know, yeah, surprisingly, not. I wouldn't. I mean, I love Jordan, but I wouldn't go back to Jordan. Really? I would. Um, Only because I was like scared for my life the entire time. But I don't know why I was because I just oh. felt like it was a very male dominated country and yes, i felt really vulnerable and fragile and thankfully we had a really good driver that mm -hmm. took us everywhere mm -hmm. and he was a guy and he yeah. knew the area and he was really good to us yeah um and we tipped him really well <laughs> so yeah. um but i think we were lucky that we had someone kind of mm -hmm. drive us around show us mm -hmm. around because i think without him i probably would be even more scared <laughs> oh it would have been different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you know, it's kind of weird because I have such an affinity with being American. You guys might be like, oh, yeah, she thinks she's white, you know? And it's like, <laughs> I don't she know. She thinks she's untouchable. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, of course, I'm, I'm, yeah. I be, I'm very careful when I'm traveling. But I definitely have a certain confidence and a certain, you do, like, yeah. when I'm traveling, like a certain presence, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't display that I'm afraid and I'm not afraid of anyone or anything, mm -hmm. but you still have to be smart. So I wasn't afraid, but I definitely noticed what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, even driving to our hotel, mm -hmm. no females were out. No women were out. It was men across the street in the shops doing business, like men everywhere. Like, I'm like, where are all the women? But in these some of these countries, like the women don't work. They stay at home, you know, that the, they stick to that traditional role. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I definitely noticed that, too. Yeah. So, yeah, as much as I loved it, I probably wouldn't go back. Unless, like, my significant I'm other. I go back with, by myself. Well, I mean, unless mm -hmm. my significant other is really, really adamant about going, then f fine, I'll go. But we're going to have to look up that driver's name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if he's still working, hire what, him back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hire him back. Uh, but, Yeah. But that was the only. That's the only other place. I feel like the Middle East is a little bit. It's a little iffy for me on, yeah. on my travel list. I definitely do have a fascination with the Middle East. I know. Mm, I, I don't know why. It's because I grew up with like, Aladdin and. Um, we did too. <laughs> you know what I mean. But those stories. Yeah. Is there's something magical and beautiful about the Middle East to me? Um. But I understand that their traditions and their religions and their values are very different from mine. Mm -hmm. So when I go there, I I want to respect that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Okay. I've been watching a lot of YouTube, you know, many documentaries and shows and stuff like that. All the countries that we were at war with, Afghanistan, Iraq, mm -hmm. um, they're they're getting their economy together. They're opening up their borders. Mm -hmm. They're letting people come in for tourism. 
think it was one of those two countries has been spiking and continuing to grow ever since 2020, reopening after COVID. And then I've been seeing a lot of promotional videos with the Chinese. The Chinese uh, woman, a Chinese woman's like, oh, I love this place. It's so beautiful. Really? Yeah. Um, Promoting the Middle East? Yes, yes. Wow. Those countries. So it, it's it's a tactic to get people to feel safe. They're letting YouTubers go in and to talk about their experiences too. And the YouTubers are saying messages like, you know what, you guys, this is really safe and the people are really great. And everybody th that it comes on their channel says, we love Americans. Yeah. We love Americans, you know, so... It's, it's really yeah. interesting. Um, they're really trying to open up and be a part of society. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about places we love, places we wouldn't go to again. What are some tips that you guys would give about traveling? Oh, my God. Carry on only. <laughs> some people, I, um, okay. Unless you shop. Yeah. <laughs> You okay. know what? Honestly, I was in India, and I had to buy, like, a whole other luggage yeah, yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see? Yep. Yeah. I think if you, okay. So if you go, I did that too in Italy. <laughs> yeah. If you go to a country and you know you're gonna shop, bring a check-in with your carry-on on the in the inside or something, so that mm, you only smart. have one check-in, and then make sure you use an air tag because uh, that's important. Otherwise, you're gonna lose your luggage. But always have carry you guys lost your luggage? No. No, I have. I've been very. But it's a fortunate. I heard it's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I've been fortunate not to yeah lose it. But they. I mean, I don't do this. Maybe I should. But I don't do this because, I, again, I do travel only with carry-on, too, even international trips. Even our two-week international trip, I still only did carry-on only. Mm -hmm. you know, like, pack very light, wear the mm -hmm. you know clothes that you can wear different, uh, make different outfits out of. I do travel. Do really, laundry. <laughs> yeah. I do travel really light when I, um, mm -hmm. so that I yep. can only carry on and carry on. The only time I wouldn't do a carry-on is if I'm going to go to South Korea because I want to buy skincare and I want to buy makeup mm. and that's the only time I would go in Japan probably is where I would do some shopping those are probably the only two places and if I go to Europe would be the only other place that I would actually bring the <coughs> bigger bag mm. but in Europe man travel as light as you can because there is a lot of stairs okay you gotta bring your luggage up a lot of stairs okay so when we went to Europe okay I didn't know this and this is my own fault but I did not travel light my bag was so heavy. What did you have in there? We were gone for two and a half weeks. Oh, okay. We were gone for two and a half weeks, and we weren't just staying just in London. So we did a whole, like, Euro trip. So we went from London, Paris, down to Milan, Florence, and then flew out of Rome. Yeah, I did not travel light, and it was super heavy. How many pairs of shoes did you have? Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I brought four pairs of shoes, which was <laughs> so dumb, the, wow. the dumbest thing ever, because they weren't like comfortable shoes either. They were like oh my God. cute little booties oh. and cute little <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay. It was just like the wow. most dumb thing I can ever have done. But that was when I was young. It was like when I was one of my first international travels. So I'm a very light packer. Like my sisters laugh all the time. Like, you know, we had a sister strip too, just to, where, where did we go to um, Phoenix? And I showed up with like a little small little carry on bag and two avocados. They tell that story all the time. Like she, oh. she showed up with like a tiny little bag and two avocados because I'm like such a light packer. Like I only take the essentials and then if I need something, I'll buy it. You know, mm -hmm. I do not pack and bring things. See, what makes my bag heavy is my skincare and my makeup. <laughs> a, a lot of women say that. Yeah. My other friend, she, she same hair stuff skincare stuff like yeah. all the i've stuff. seen like travel skincare bags yeah and seen girls carrying them and i'm like that is too much i've been much better about it yeah. so if i'm traveling overseas i do do a last extension so i don't have to carry all of that extra <laughs> thing stuff you know so it's just faster yeah. and also when i'm traveling internationally i don't do a full beat i just do my <laughs> lash extensions and then just regular concealer and you know powder so I don't do a full beat when I'm uh, traveling internationally uh, because who cares? I mean, I should care, but, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have traveled a lot. I do travel a lot lighter now. I don't even own a check-in bag. I don't even own that size anymore. I just all carry on. Now uh, I do because of India. Oh. I bought like a huge oh, yeah. luggage for India. When you bought, yeah. when you bought the extra. And I bought an extra bag coming back. I'm, yeah. 
I feel like that's what is going to happen when I go to South Korea too. Mm -hmm. My tips, yeah, would be travel light. Always travel light if yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is download the local apps. So like when we were in Southeast Asia, when we were in Vietnam and uh, Thailand, they have an app called Grab, which is equivalent to like our Uber. Yep. And that's definitely was very, very useful. Yep. When you're in South Korea, they have a neighbor app which is similar to our Google Maps, mm. but for their country. Mm. So like look up their local apps that they use yeah. and utilize that. You'll get around much, much easier mm -hmm. using their local apps. Yep. Yep. And don't feed the birds in Milan. Uh, that was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> okay. So when we were in London, we went to go see one of the chapels, right? And there was a guy out, out there just giving us like bird seats. And he, he put it in our hand mm -hmm. and we fed the birds and he... He's so nice. He took photos of us and oh it was goodness. so cute. I had like the cutest photo. And then when we went to Milan, when we were in front of that, you know, that really popular chapel, mm -hmm. these guys came up to us and they kind of did the same thing. They put okay. seeds in our hands and they're like, oh, yeah, feed it here. And he goes, okay. he's like, oh, I'll take a picture of you. So he took pictures of uh, the, the four of us. It was me and my okay. three uh, other friends. I took a picture of us. And then as soon as he was done, he was like $20. And we're like, <laughs> what? Oh, we're like, he was like $20 each. Which what? Was, yeah, uh huh. 20, like, 20 no. euros? Yeah, uh huh. I oh, hope you guys no. just walked away. That's 25, yeah. 25. Yeah. So, no, two, so the two girls walked away. They started walking towards, like, there was a cop, like, by the mm -hmm. chapel. And then me and my other friend were there, and I was like, I was scared. And she, she was like, she goes, no. She goes, we're not going to give you 20 each. Mm -mm. She goes, if anything, we'll give you five. And so she gave him, I think it was five euros. Mm -hmm. And he kept like harassing us, kept mm -hmm. following us, trying to get us yeah. to pay him more. Uh -huh. Wow. And then I was like, oh my, oh my God, that's so scary. She goes, well, we should have fed the birds. I'm like, well, we did it in London and he didn't charge us. <laughs> but yeah, if you're in Milan, don't get scammed by those people, okay? Don't get scammed by anybody. This happens all, everywhere, even yeah. in New York, where like there's like these people with CDs and yeah. they're not, oh, you, they oh, try no. to give you a CD. And then if you, even if you look at it, they're like 10 bucks, man, you know, yeah. or whatever. And oh. like, excuse me. You know? Yeah, I used to be so gullible to those things. I used to like mm -hmm. take everything, and I f and I get like scared. So then, like, <laughs> so then, okay. like, here you go. Yeah, because like even when we're in London, there was these people going around like snatching bags. Mm -hmm. They're like come up to you, and they like they're like beggars. You know, the, yeah. Like, when we were in uh, Vietnam, and there was these beggars. Well, actually, they send their little kids to come <laughs> ask for money, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. so sad. And I'm just like. <laughs> Yeah. They're like, don't talk to them, don't talk to them. And I'm yeah. like, mm -hmm. how can I not talk to them? There's, mm -hmm. It's so sad. I'm like, oh I can't God, do it. No. But I get it. It's like it's like everywhere. So yeah. I think if anything, kind of like when you're in L.A. and Just if you're in downtown. Just don't take anything for free. Yeah. If you're in LA, LA Nothing's and you're in downtown, yeah. don't talk to anyone. <laughs> okay. No, no, head, down, head down. Don't talk to anyone. Yeah. Those are my tips. Okay. I have a tip. Ma and our other friend screwed me over. What? You in food? <laughs> In Vietnam. Right. So if you're going to you leave, sick, right? No, she was sick. Oh, she was sick. Yeah. If you sit down somewhere and they're prepping a bottle for you, don't just leave. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> let, me, let me explain this story. Don't okay. just leave because you have to tell them, hey, you know what? I don't want it anymore. We're, we're going to leave. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, let me explain the story. Okay. This, this is what <laughs> happened. We were in the, we were in horrible. The, we were in that Red light district ish Saigon. area of of Saigon, yeah. uh, of Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, or whatever. And so it was it was right around my birthday time. So then our friend, our guy friend that was with us, was like, "Oh, let's you know, let's go out and celebrate, get a bottle, and get a bottle." And so then we went and we sat down. And you know they're super aggressive in in Vietnam. Okay, in that area. You told me that. Okay, they're, yeah, you they're told super me. aggressive. Everyone's like in your freaking face oh, so finally we just went to go sit down at this one place we got a bottle of jameson so we're sitting there and me and her it took forever yeah it took forever we're taking too long me and, me and her the guy friend was like talking we we're like hey you know they're taking they're taking a while you know we're already a little bit tipsy anyways you know and it's not we're not really feeling the vibe they didn't even bring us water okay they didn't bring us anything we were just sitting there it was empty table he goes we should go and i was like really just get up and go he goes yeah i was like you tell cash well, okay wait so so <laughs> we weren't just all talking about it i was farther from them yeah. i was sitting by myself they were next to each other yeah so I, I was like what are you guys talking about no no no, no, no. I couldn't so hear we guys. were talking and then i was like i'm like you tell cash if you want to leave so we told cash we we're like hey you know we want to go and you're like really and then we're like we're like yeah i mean they didn't bring us anything there's no bottle there's no water there's we don't even have napkins okay there was nothing at this table okay mm -hmm. and so 
So then we were talking and I was like, if you go, I go, right? And then so then, of course, the guy friend gets up, pretends he's on his phone to be on his phone call. <laughs> I so, told him, don't go, don't yeah, go. Yeah. So he gets up and he, he starts walking out and then Cash looks at me and then she grabs her food and then she leaves. And oh, did you, did you guys order food? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. I got street food. food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. street. It was like, no, you, you both got up before no, I got up. No, oh, no, I left, I left last. I don't remember that. No, I left last. I remember I left last. Okay. You grabbed your food and you got up and left. I was like, oh shit. And so I came out after you guys. Me and Fu just walked faster than her. Me and Fu They started speed walking. Yeah. And she was like, and then somehow we got in front <laughs> of her. No, no. So they started speed walking really fast. And I was trying to be cool, calm, and collected and slow. And they, because they started yelling at us, like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Because they're acting like we're dining and dashing. Yeah. You know? But we didn't. There we was nothing. We didn't get anything yet. Why did you just say, where's our bottle? If you're not coming, then we're leaving. Right. I think because they were so aggressive to even get us to sit at the table, I don't think they were going to let us say no. Probably not. They're going to say, we, yeah. opened, we opened it already. Yeah. They're probably going to they're, they're gonna come with the bottle open, be like, oh, no, you already opened they, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah, so then we go, and we were walking down the street. Me and the guy are in, are in front, and then Cash is behind us. Mm -hmm. And so the so the two bouncers, well, one bouncer and the other one was a waiter, ends up stopping. Grabbed Cash. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> well, because I think they went after, they, well, they came up to the guy first, mm -hmm. and, but then he's like, I didn't have no money. I don't have any money. So he, like, showed them, like, I have nothing in my pocket. Well, of course he didn't have anything in his pocket because I was holding it for him. So he had nothing. He didn't have his wallet. He didn't have anything on him. Mm -hmm. And so I think because I was tinier, they didn't they didn't say anything to me. No, those two are way ahead of me. You guys are way ahead of me. No, they came up to food. I know, but at certain points though, like you, I didn't run to catch up with you guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. we weren't running. We were just walking faster. They were walking really fast, and they were almost you were almost running because I was already speed walking, and I didn't want to run to catch up with them because then there's going to be a, a chase. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to initiate a chase. Um, they were chasing after us. And so I continued to try to, my instinct was be just cool. walk. Mm -hmm. Just walk at a, at a, at a fa mm -hmm. fast walking speed. Don't run to chase up, to catch up with the other two. Because mm -hmm. when I start running, they're going to start running and like knocking you down, mm -hmm. you know? So but anyways, so then they stopped us. They were saying something to us. And of course, you know, we don't speak the language. So they're like, they're like, oh, you guys have to pay. We're like, we didn't drink anything. Mm -hmm. And then the bouncer that came with him didn't know what he was doing either. So, and he didn't speak English either. So the I- waiter, you mean? No, no. The waiter was talking to Cash and then yeah. the bouncer was standing next to me. Okay. And we were like, we didn't drink anything. We just left. The bouncer didn't really know what- The bouncer was neutral because the so bouncer just I, got yeah, called yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So then I texted into, I texted into my Google Translate and I said, we didn't drink anything or eat anything. So that he read that. And then he said something to the like, to yeah he said something to the waiter, mm -hmm. and then I don't know what the waiter said back to him, but he backed down the ba yeah. the bouncer backed down yeah because mm -hmm. I think the bouncer was like oh well they didn't eat anything but that was after he, they put they both put him, put me in a headlock yeah <laughs> <laughs> they chased me down and I I was, was I was gonna start I was gonna start running because those two were so far ahead of me and I I kept yelling at they them like grabbed you and put you in a headlock. Yeah. I kept, I kept yelling at them like, you guys wait for me. And they just kept, kept running <laughs> off. And I was just like, wait for me. What the, what the F? Like, you guys are not waiting for me. And I didn't want to run because they're already aggressive. And, and then they took me and they put me in a headlock. They're like, you can't go. Oh and I was so pissed. I was so pissed because those two would not wait for me. Oh I was God. so pissed. And okay. then I was you like, okay, we're going to jail tonight. We're going to go to jail in Vietnam. Oh and we're going to have to contact the embassy. Oh okay, you know what? You know what? I'm just following people, okay? Oh, I was mad. mad. Okay. I was so mad. It is, it's not no. my fault. No, no, okay. You know what? First of all, oh I was the God. last one to leave. Crying. And the only reason why you didn't walk as fast as us is because you were a little bit tipsy. No, 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 no that's not true. Yeah. I did not I did not <laughs> run to catch up with you guys. I knew I wasn't running. Yeah, but you guys, I guarantee you I was not running. I know, but I wasn't speed walking like you guys because the thing is, they were already screaming at us and chasing after us. Yeah. So if I continue to run too, it would have been a full-blown chase. But we weren't running. I was trying to keep the cool. If yeah. she ran to catch they, up they, with they, you, they, they, they would have yeah. started running. If you running. would have ran to, up to but, us, yes. But mm -hmm. I was not um, speed walking as fast as they were because I was keeping the calm because they're right by my ass, you know, like they're right, right by there. So I, I, I had to be, I had oh to be the calm God. one. I had to be like, Hey, look, stop. We didn't get anything. I was talking to them, 
you know, and because you Joseph know what, kept you running. Know, it gets, it gets, the story gets, you know, story yeah, gets, I just can't imagine. I was, so mad. Mad. I was so mad. The story, oh the story gets funnier. It's traumatic. The story gets, <laughs> the story gets funnier because the, after they stop us on the street. So we end up going back to the restaurant with them. Right. And we go back to the restaurant and they go in the, stu- the stupid waiter goes in and comes back out. And he goes, oh, sorry. Oh like yeah, basically yeah. sorry you know why because yeah. another party was sitting in our seat already oh, oh yeah that's yeah. Right. yeah so he was that's like oh why. my bad he goes he goes oh sorry you guys can go you know i was and so pissed and then she was so mad she <laughs> she put the bouncer in a headlock <laughs> <laughs> i was so pissed <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just eating. Was, oh my god the, the waiter was just like oh my bad like sorry you know and the bouncer was very remorseful like he yeah. even like he even like bowed down to the ground and said he was sorry oh my yeah, god. Uh-huh. Wow. yeah he was like oh, he bowed on he bowed on the ground he would say he was sorry and then she was so upset that she still <laughs> had locked the bouncer anyways <laughs> Even after he, <laughs> even after he already said sorry and oh he bowed my down, God, that's I, was like, I was like, if she was gonna headlock anybody, should have been the waiter. He was kind of a dick. Uh, yeah, but the master was the one who actually put you both, in the headlock. No, both, both of them. them. Yeah. Oh my God, I would have done it to the both of them too. The waiter was a, was a, was a dick. The oh. bouncer was very remorseful, and he was like, yeah. he was, I'm, he was like, basically, I'm so sorry. You to know, be fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I'm so sorry. Oh, you yes. know, like. I'm so mad at these two, but I really thought we were, I really thought we were going to jail. Oh, oh I didn't think so. I really thought we were going to jail. That is hilarious. Hey, but to be fair, that guy friend bought her an Apple Watch to say he was sorry. So, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, so, she deserves um, it for getting into the getting a headlock. So, oh so um, when we were we were trying to talk, it was creating a commotion on the on the street, mm-hmm. and some locals mm-hmm. um, who knew English. They were trying to help us. Oh, and then so they're like, "Okay, okay, let me help you. I know English. I know English." He was oh. just like, "Go back to the restaurant." And yeah, he was just yeah. settle it there. He's like, "He's he like, like, you don't want them to call the cops." Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, "You know what? Look, this is the lesson. Okay, this is the tip." He said, "Look, you can't just walk away. If yeah. you have to communicate with the people, exactly. You know, so so if you don't, then they don't know the situation. So you have to go back there and talk to them." So we're mm-hmm. like, "I'm like, yeah. I mean, let's go. You know, but it was." I was really traumatized. That is hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. I was I was traumatized. I was upset and you know, I was just like, oh it my reminds god. you of Jordan? It reminds me of Jordan and how we almost get into a fight with the Oh that those, that, that, that French that the French lady. Maybe you just attract drama. <laughs> just kidding. No, that French lady. <laughs> she, okay, so in, okay, so in Jordan when we're the man was so quiet. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> he didn't oh, say he nothing. Was a, he was the female. Yeah, in he a relationship. He, so yeah. And, okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Last story before <laughs> we wrap this up. So we were in Jordan with the Wadi Rum. So to get to the Wadi Rum, you have to take this basically a pickup truck, right? Everyone gets in. They take you to where everyone else can pick you up. Yeah. It's, so, it's let me set the scene. So you drive in from the airport, like through town. I don't know how many hours it took us. Two and a half so hours. It's in the middle of the desert. Then we have to change into a pickup truck too to also go to the site, to the Wadi Rum site, which is like these kind of like dome like tent lamp clamping kind of like yeah, desert clamps. Yeah. Um it's beautiful. Yeah. Must see. But we had to take a pickup truck to go all the way out there to the middle of the desert. Yeah. And so, so on the way back, it's the same way. Mm-hmm. You have to wait in line, we get on this thing to get back to mm-hmm your wherever your car is picking yeah. you up so we were all we were there first yep yep the there we were the first group in line waiting for us pickup. and then we were there early in the morning because they only picked us pick up at a certain time and it took forever to come so then the, of course you know more people started to crowd around yeah and there was this girl from france because she was yelling at us in french and she was trying to cut in line because she didn't want to wait because she knew that she would have to she maybe have to have waited Maybe an, maybe another hour for another pickup truck to come mm-hmm. through. And she didn't want to. So then she's like inching her way, trying to get in. through the four of us, through yeah. everyone behind us and then each mm-hmm. one of us. Yeah. And as soon as the truck pulls up, Cash, she like tries to climb onto this because you have to climb up. and Yeah. Go she in. like basically pushes Cash and climbs the truck first. Yeah. And her boyfriend, her her loser boyfriend is standing over here with me and I think she you, right? You and watching. You, yeah, no. he's just sitting there like chilling, <laughs> like like okay, like I'm just I'm just gonna chill over here and yeah. wait to see what happens. And so she just she just gets on, and then of course she just starts saying a bunch of stuff in French and doing all those like 
annoying kissing noises, you know? And I was like, we're like, I like, kissed my ass. I got in the, to the yeah. truck first. I uh, jumped the the line in front of all you yeah. Asians, you know, yeah. like I, I, no like, regard for I us. Yeah. was livid yeah. as well. Yeah. But, but the thing is that she was already up. So we told her to calm down because he, because the last thing we want her to do is kick boot, my face, put you, <laughs> you in the face, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, you're gonna kick her ass until she's off the truck, mm-hmm. you know, and then kick her ass. We almost got into a group fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so then, so then she ends up going sit sitting uh, around on the other side, and then her boyfriend ends up getting on last, of course, mm-hmm. and he's just like, <laughs> he just mosey on in onto the other side. He doesn't say anything. So the whole time in the car. I'm like cussing her out and she's cussing me out in French. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the, the her her man's just sitting there all quiet. You yeah. know, and I'm just yeah. like, what? Like I, I hope was... they break up because he should recognize she probably that abuses she him. is like yeah. She, yeah. <laughs> she probably does because yeah. she, but she's so she's so like rude. Yeah, she's and he's so rude. quiet. She, she abuses him. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Maybe so she quiet. beats him. Oh my yeah. god. But you know, um, I was so upset but then no, you know I, what i was too. no but, but the thing is that the reason why we, we we told her to calm down is because we're in a foreign country we don't know what the rules are in a foreign country <laughs> and the last thing we want to do is go into some foreign jail jail oh, yeah. yeah but if they have a minimum hold time of 30 days <laughs> yeah. before you can see the embassy yeah. <laughs> we lose our job everything <laughs> so so I was like, no, just just calm down. And it's not worth it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, if we weren't in a foreign country, it would have been different, okay. you know. But that <laughs> was insane. Mm-hmm. But I think, okay. but I get what you guys are saying. You know, I hate that people I've, just assume yeah. because we're Asian that we're gonna we're not, we're not gonna, gonna speak up. Yeah, we have yeah, no yeah, backbone. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. no, that's yeah. not. But I will say one one thing. Something I learned recently. Okay. Uh, this person was training in the special force in okay. a, di- a different country. Okay. And this force, this person said, the first thing they learn in the special forces is, if you can avoid a fight, avoid a fight. Mm-hmm. If you could avoid a conflict, avoid a conflict. Right. And that was the first thing they learned in special forces for this country. And the reason is because they said, if you're gonna fight, assume you're gonna die. So well, well, that's, that's in their situation, situation <laughs> not in ours. That that's, that's special hella dramatic. Yeah. That, no, 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 that's no, no, special no, forces. No, yes. but it, it's it's the it's the it's the property of that lesson that is really strong because you're right. You have to pick and choose your fights, you know. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's even, not worth it. I for us, it wasn't for, in Dubai. But I think it, even in nor- I think even in normal situations, you don't know the extent of their crazy right, right. Yeah. a road yeah. rage someone yeah. could kill you yeah. uh-huh. yeah. you know there's a story yeah. in la true story yeah. two guys were parked in the parking lot they got into a fight yeah the, the guy punches him and and the other guy dies yes. and, and then the other guy went to jail and yep. it was so sad like yeah. it, it was yep. so stupid yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so you true. be careful and understand that like we have something to lose but so you know smart. what but actually also message to the other person in this whole situation Situation. like be nice like what is wrong with you just be a decent human and then these things won't happen like wait your turn act classy yeah act act classy (laughs) what boyfriend sure did (laughs) yeah exactly you know what whatever is you're probably gonna get your karma yeah she will yeah she will will, you know she probably already has yeah looking at her the way she looks (laughs) (laughs) she's got her karma (laughs) But you but, know what? I do have a good story. I used to go to Tulum a lot. I haven't been since being out here in LA. Like, I haven't felt the need to travel at all being out here in LA mm-hmm. because I can go to the beach. Mm-hmm. I can go to Palm Springs. I, and it, the desert, the mountains, the yeah. ocean is like right there. I don't need to travel anymore. I don't feel like that desire like for vacation because I'm on vacation. I used to go to Tulum a lot, like at least twice a year. The guy that I met the first time as my driver, he continued to be my driver and we're like uh, Facebook friends oh, wow. and he, you know we chat all the time how's it going and mm-hmm. he calls me hermana and i call him hermano and it's really nice to mm-hmm. kind of like go back to a place and develop friendships with mm-hmm. people that's kind of the opposite of some of the uh <laughs> two stories <laughs> our, story. our driver our driver in jordan was amazing yeah. and, amazing and we, if we go back we probably hit him up yeah again because he's, he's so trusting so safe yep. so accommodating yep. professional yep yeah yep. And we told him about the fight, and he was like, "That's so wrong." Yeah, yeah. and he was like, "Yeah." 
I mean, yeah. I'm glad he was on our side, even, yeah. though, he, even though he probably didn't care. But, but he acted <laughs> like he was. Yeah. He, he acted like he cared. Like, he, he probably cared. He probably was like, wow, yeah, that's yeah. hard, guys. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, you had to go through that. He probably was like, these crazy girls. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, we went off on a lot of tangents um, about our travels. <laughs> but apparently we have a lot of travel stories because um, we do travel. There's probably quite, a lot more. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of funny ones, okay? Mm-hmm. Something always happens in every city. <laughs> Something <laughs> always happens mm-hmm. in every city. Like in uh, the other Vietnam story. <laughs> but we won't talk about it. We'll talk about it in another episode, maybe. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you got some tips and tricks on traveling, especially traveling internationally. Um, But thank you guys for joining us today. Happy Thanksgiving. See you guys in another episode. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, guys.